Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages. This is the War Master, and today we've got another tutorial video for you. And we're going after the mighty bowfin at the Mudwater River. Uh, a few things about the bowfin: they are a hard-fighting fish, and they do not give up easily. So let's have a look at the equipment that we're going to be using. Okay, let's get onto a float rod for starters. So let's go over here and have a look. Yep, so let's go. Yep, that's the one we want. Right. Okay, first things first, let's start setting this thing up we want. So we want to put on to this flow something a little bit heavier. See, I would normally go for the 16 pound, but this particular reel isn't got a very good uh, reliability for that. So I'm going to go for a 20 pound braid, which is a little bit thinner, but a lot stronger line, and I can pay out quite a bit more. It isn't, it hasn't got as much uh, give in it, but you know, we'll see, just see how we get on. Okay, I'm going to have to bring the leader down to approximately 45. And I'm going to stick a 3 ot hook on there. I've already got the chubby bobber, so I don't have to worry about that. Yep, there it is. And uh, let's have a look. We're going to be using medium cut bait today, because, believe it or not, that's what they feed on. They also feed on light, uh, or sorry, small cut bait. But medium cut seems to be their uh, preferred uh, food. Let's have a look now. Let's see what else. Oh, that should be it. So, yeah. this is the rod I'm using. It's the Omnivoke 1410. Uh, it has a, uh, tw what is it, a 7.5 pound uh, limit on it. The fish can get up to 9 pounds, so we could face some problems picking up one of these fish. Especially with, uh, what is it, uh, well with this reel, it doesn't hold much in the way of a uh, decent line. I'm going to have to get a new reel, this one's uh, getting a little bit old now. Uh, then I've got my braid line, and right, let's go over and see how we get on. Right, now we've arrived at uh, Mudwater River, we're going to have to have a look to see what time of day we're going to go for. Right, we're going to arrive in at 5 o'clock in the morning, which is the perfect time for bowfin. Uh, bowfin normally peak out at around 6, 7 o'clock in the morning, and then they start feeding again uh, in the uh, at late afternoon, early evening. And they don't peak out at normal peak times, as uh, they are a bit different. So if you look at where the drop-off points are, they will pick up uh, either side of that... Uh, Either side of those ridges heading off into the evening time, so you're looking at about five, six o'clock in the evening, and uh, seven o'clock in the morning. Right, let's go to a private room as we just entered it. We're going to turn off the chat because uh, I want to actually show you the video without any big fish in the way. Let's put up the reel and the rod and all the other equipment that we just brought up. Uh, remember, a five a.m. start, so you can fish for these fish straight away. And where you're going to cast out is just past the lily pads on the left hand side because the way the fishery is it will actually uh, be bringing in between left and right because of the way that the water is flowing. So about there should do. And uh, yeah you're going to be just buying your lily pads over there so yeah. I'm at about 100 feet out here. I'm going to select that. You can fish from all over this area, like along these reeds, anywhere there. Uh, I'm personally going for this area because that's where the trophies are and that's what I'm going to be aiming for. Yeah, you can pick uh, trophies up with this setup. It isn't hard. But the fight itself can be. Depending on how powerful the fish is that you uh, hook. Okay. 
just waiting for our first customer to come along now. It shouldn't take long. Uh, both in uh, quite renowned for their uh, feeding habits, so we will see how quick we can get one to bite. And uh, tell you what, we'll see how we get on in a few minutes or so. Right now we seem to have a customer. Uh, let's see where we get on. Yeah. Now, you see, I messed up here. I know I messed up it. So, right, I struck hard, and I start reeling her in, and I let her start running too hard. I was thinking, yeah, keep your uh, line taut, but I wasn't thinking that you have to pump these things out of the river, and it's going to cost me big, as you can tell. Yeah, now I start pumping, but by this point it's already too late. She's pulled out too much line, and now I'm having to fight an uphill fight to try and get her in. Yep, there we go. Yep, I'm starting to lose ground to this fish. You can't let these fish rest. You really can't. The moment they rest is the moment that they get a little bit extra energy and they'll punch on. These things fight like they don't <laughs> know anything else what to do. So I'm pumping away as hard as I can, but that fish just doesn't want to come in. The moment I start, yeah, it's now turning on me. And it's just sitting out at one, two, three, and I'm like, yeah, I need to start thinking about just giving up here. Bang, that's it. First first warning blow and I'm like right okay just let this thing go Gavin just let this go just let it go war what's going on what are you, why are you doing this and then I have to make a choice the rod or the reel and I stupidly chose the reel and snap there we go that's how you mess up with bowfin they don't give you a second chance this, you mess up you have to basically start all over again and that's what I had to do so I came back a bit later on with another uh, reel and uh, what was it? I managed to fit the 16 pound line onto this one. Uh, I'll give you the details of that reel in a bit. Let's uh, see now as I engage a new customer. And this time you'll see how I actually reel it in properly this time. I don't leave, let that fish have a moment's peace. And yeah, straight in. It's not even trying to fight me. This one, this one's just gonna come in nice and slow. Yeah, all the way in. And finally, we've caught ourselves our first bowfin. So use that uh, one that I showed you earlier as a what not to do, rather than uh, the gospel on what to do to catch them. So I cast back out. And I believe that if you, uh, <laughs> because they're a pursuit fish, you can bait them into go, uh, or bring them in. Uh, if you move the bait into position by casting further out than what you intended to on purpose and then meal into position, you actually draw fish in onto your hook a lot better. Because that's what seems to work for me. I mean, it may not work for everyone. But it seems to work for me quite quite nicely. So let's see how long it takes for a bowfin to have a go now. I don't think, yeah, there we go. Straight, look, look at that, nice customer coming up. Now with bowfin, they like to play with their food a little bit, much like cats, and uh, bang, there we go. Straight in. This time, I am not playing games, I am just I do not fall into the same problem as what I had earlier. So I'm making sure that that thing doesn't get a moment's peace. I'm pumping that thing as if I'm fighting it. Uh, well, fighting a gar, basically. So I don't want. Well, I've got, I know I've got 278 feet of uh, 16 pound line on this. I am not losing another fish because I didn't work it properly. So, you see, it's already starting to give ground, so 
I'm like, yeah, you're coming in, buddy, and you're not coming. You're gonna come in right now. Notice how I'm actually locking the reel uh, by uh, pulling up without uh, continuing the retrieval. So you're actually using the bow in the rod to do all the work for the pull. And that's what I what that's what I mean by actually pumping your. Uh, well, the pumping the rod, and this fish still fights all the way up to the point I actually get the damn thing in. Even at this moment in time, it's not fighting as hard as what it was originally, but it's still giving a good, uh, it's still doing a good account for itself. So yeah, right now we're gonna stick. Yeah, now it's starting to uh, get the idea that it's not gonna get away. It's almost given up on the idea. So now I'm not even trying to pump it, so and it's coming in nice and easy. It may come be coming in slow because of the weight of the fish, but it won't it doesn't matter. It's coming in. It's done. So what we So from my previous mistake I have now learnt that with uh both in you have to be prepared to fight them for the moment they get hooked because if you don't you will end up regretting it and uh... there should be a nice size both in here there we go there you go that's the trophy a little seven point two pound trophy bait thing notice the experience is worth a lot more uh, I took a photograph this is for uh, the fishing club page beautiful beautiful fish and uh, well what more can I say that's literally yeah I came back later that uh, day uh, well, the next day uh, after emptying my bag out, because I wanted to try something different. Now, I caught one previously, but this was uh, pretty much the end of the day for me. I was uh, just saying, sod it, I'll just get another fish and uh, call it a day, because uh, I wanted to go on with other things. So, as you can see, I get a good hard hit, bang, right there. I'll start reeling her in. And I don't let this fish up for a moment. I start fighting it from the moment she gets hooked on to the moment I've actually lifted her out of the water. And uh, as you can see, I'm really fighting hard with this fish right now. So, yeah, I'm go I'm going all hells for leather. I don't want that fish off at all. So I'm starting to pump the rod. I'm reeling in constantly, keeping the pressure up. I don't let her have a moment's peace. And you can see that it actually pays dividends. A bit later on, I increase the drag up uh, to two thir uh, what was it two thirds, and I just keep going, keep pumping. I know the rod can take it; she's done it before, and I'm sure she'll do it again later on. So yeah, you just just keep going, keep pumping, and you see how uh, she's starting to give in. Look, she knows that she she ain't gonna get away. That fish is not getting away from me. Yeah, keep going, buddy. You're not. You, I don't care. You are not getting away from me whatsoever. So I'm constantly fighting here. This fish is coming in nice and easy now. Fifty, forty, three. Yeah, just constantly pumping that rod. Don't let it rest. And I pulled her out. There she is. And that nice way to finish the day, a little five pound one. Absolutely beautiful fish. Look at the colours on that. Now the way uh the way you can actually see yeah, look, look, yeah. So the way you can actually tell uh, what kind of fish you're going for is after you catch your first one, look at the setup that it's underslung jaw with a uh, lock jaw set uh underslung lock lock jaw, which means that it's got its jaw is bigger than its snout. It's got large eye and it sh that will tell you itself uh, that it 
well the pupil in the eye is uh, fixed large so it is quite light sensitive so me actually holding out the water like this tortures it so take some of that for fighting me you bastard <laughs> Yeah, uh, a little note is uh, if you look for the dorsal fin as it leads down to the tail, it, it actually curves around like that, and they're giving it a distinct impression of a bow. Hence, how come they were given the name bowfish? But yeah, we'll keep him. And uh, that was all I caught because I wanted to do other things and uh, I wanted to make sure that I did a decent video for you guys. So that was all she wrote. And uh, well, that's the end of this video. Uh, please take uh, time to have a look at the setup I've got here. And I'll catch you guys next time. Take care and happy fishing.